boy, do we have a lot to cover today. So first off, the UN is demanding President Trump accept the asylum seekers coming over from Mexico. The synagogue that was shot up over the weekend where 11 people were killed, their rabbi is now receiving death threats and hate mail. President Trump takes shots at former Senator Harry Reid and House Speaker Paul Ryan. And the last thing we'll do is just cover some last-minute forecast uh, for the midterm elections. So, starting things off, the United Nations is stating Donald Trump, President Donald Trump, has to accept these asylum seekers because they're fleeing prosecution and violence. And this is an article from the Daily Wire, and this caravan has reached up to about 14,000 people, and now there, there's even speculation that more caravans are starting because of this one. Now, the spokesman for the UN had an interview with Voice of America, and in that interview, he stated the following. Our position globally is that the individuals who are fleeing prosecution and violence need to be given access to territory and protection, including the refugee status and determination procedure. And if the people who are fleeing prosecution and violence enter Mexico, they need to be provided access to the Mexican asylum system, and those entering the United States need to be provided access to the American asylum system. This is what the United Nations is telling us, that we need to accept these people in without question. There's a few problems with that, though. And one of the first problems I have to bring up is the fact that not all of these people who are in the migrant caravan are truly trying to seek asylum. No, they're not. Some of them are over there trying to seek employment. They are just coming over here to find jobs, to find work, which the Mexican government has offered them and they have denied, which just adds to the speculation of what the hell do they really want then? Because the jobs were offered to them over in Mexico, in which they denied. Second issue is the fact that they just overpowered the Mexican government or the Mexican government just allowed them to and rolled over and just forced their way through the border. They did that. And there's a video out uh, on actor James Wood's Twitter where the migrant immigrants are throwing are tearing down a barrier, throwing stones at it, and just acting completely insane. On top of that, there's been reports in this article, uh, The Daily Wire, that uh, some of the group, uh, the Central American migrants who were facing deportation ended up setting fire to the Mexican immigration facility. So these people are not acting civil at all. They are not showing any respect for the law whatsoever, whatsoever, and which is why President Trump is sending down approximately 5,000 active duty troops to the southern border so that way they can help the 2,100 National Guard members that are there as well as the Border Patrol members that are there. Because who knows what can happen? Because it does, doesn't seem that all of them are as innocent as the media would like them to be and portrays them as which is kind of irritating to me, and the reason it's irritating is because there's two sides to every story, and in order to hear both sides, you have to listen to two completely different uh, political outlets. You can't listen to CNN for both sides. You're going to have to listen to CNN and Fox News to get both perspectives. And it's a lot of work, and a lot of people don't do that, and a lot of people don't have time to do that, which is understandable. But then that makes it harder for the people in our country to feel unified with uh, their fellow citizens because half of the country watches exclusively nothing but Fox News, and half the country watches nothing but exclusively CNN or MSNBC. So they have completely distorted views of what's really going on in the world as opposed to having a complete view and understanding both sides of the story, which should be really told, especially when it's something uh, like the migrant issue here, where not everybody's truly trying to seek asylum. Not everybody's fleeing violence. Obviously, there are some people who need it and deserve it uh, that are fleeing uh, violence and prosecution. I'm sure there are some people that are doing just that. I do not deny it, and I'm all for those who are, truly need the help to come over. But as far as the people who are just trying to come through 
with the asylum without a visa or anything like that. I disagree with that. I don't think that they should be allowed to do it. And I do think that we should be cautious of them, especially with the way they're acting over in Mexico. It just isn't good. And the last thing I have to say about this article in particular is why would we even consider listening to the UN when they have dictators on the Human Rights Council? Yeah, they have dictatorships on the, on the dictatorships uh, on the Human Rights Council. They have China on the Human Rights Council, who is currently imprisoning innocent Muslims uh, by the millions. They have over. They have about. A, a little over a million Muslims in concentration camps where they are brainwashing them and torturing them so that way they detach themselves from the individual and become one with the communistic party and become one with the collective. That's what they're doing over in China. And they're on the Human Rights Council of the United Nations. And we want to listen to the United Nations? Get out of here. Get out of here. We ain't listening to no United Nations. They have no say in what we do as far as immigration. And they should be the last ones to uh, point fingers. They really should be because we are the ones leading the way for most of the positive things going on in the world. Truly. We were one, if, we were one of, if not the only nation to call out China on their concentration camps. Nikki Haley, the UN ambassador, called them out. I don't remember hearing anybody else calling them out yet yeah. why are we doing nothing about this and so i digress point being why should we listen to the un when they allow dictatorships to control a human council human rights council i don't think we should so i think this article is laughable is is comical because the UN is trying to tell us what to do. <laughs> Who cares about the UN anyways, really, when it comes down to it? I mean, it's not even really a United Nations. How can we be a United Nations when there's countries that have way different values than we do? They don't believe in democracy. They don't believe in individual rights. How can we be United Nations when we don't even have common values? It's just impossible. So, yeah. That's my two cents there, and that's what's going on uh, with the United Nations trying to uh, demand President Trump accept these migrants uh, under an umbrella term uh, uh, that they are seeking uh, refuge from violence and prosecution. Now, in other news, the rabbi of the synagogue that was shot up over the weekend by a bigot anti-Semite who came in, opened the door, guns ablaze, and saying, all Jews must die. He would, killed 11 people. Killed 11 people. This rabbi allowed President Trump to come visit him in the synagogue to pay his respects, as he should do as the President of the United States. And by doing this, the rabbi now received death threats and hate mail because he did this. That is insane, and it doesn't help the political climate, the cultural climate, anything going on in the United States. It doesn't help one bit. And it kind of goes to show, since there's nobody really covering that he has received these threats and hate mail in the mainstream media, that they are just posturing and virtue signaling when they claim uh, President Trump is anti-Semitic for his, hate, uh, his heated and hated, uh, hate-filled rhetoric that caused all this, although the person who shot up the synagogue was anti-Trump and was very anti-Trump because the Trump administration has been one of the most, if not the most, pro-Jewish administrations in American history. The first presidential administration to actually uh, move the embassy in Jerusalem and consider it uh, the capital uh, over there. And... He was totally against it, the person who shot it up. And so, anyway, getting to the interview in which happened on Monday with the uh, rabbi of the synagogue and CNN. Uh, the CNN asked him if he believed that Trump's rhetoric had anything to do with inciting the violence that happened at the synagogue and if he would allow President Trump to visit the synagogue. And this was his response. I don't really foist blame upon any person. 
The President of the United States is always welcome. I am a citizen. He is my president. He is always welcome. And this statement right here is what initiated the attacks. So after he said this, this is a quote uh, from him on Wednesday morning from CNN, according to the Daily Mail. And this article is from the Daily Wire. And the quote states, When I first said that the per president was welcome, I received a lot of mail. Too, too numerous to count. I've received many that are not happy with those words. Those emails also contain hate. It just continues in this vicious cycle. We need to be better than this. We can be better than this. And Insider Edition had reported Wednesday, today, that he has also received death threats, although there has no, been no independently conf, independent confirmation of that. But there is speculation that he has received death threats, and he has, for certain, received hate mail because he allowed President Trump to come visit the synagogue. Now, what I want to play here may not uh, seem relevant, but I believe it is. And the reason I believe it is is because uh, it just goes to show that the mainstream media doesn't really care about uh, the heated rhetoric and they don't care about uh, lowering the temperatures as far as the uh, as far as where we stand in our uh, political environment right now. Uh, they don't care. They don't care at all. They didn't really care about what happened. I mean, they did, obviously, when it comes to the people who died. They do care about that. But they're trying to blame Trump's rhetoric for the attack, which is completely wrong, if you ask me, because President Trump did not exclusively say to go attack any Jewish place or anybody of race. He has never once stated that. Never once. So therefore, he has never incited violence through his speech. That is just blatantly false. But, you know, we have doublespeak here over at CNN. Apparently, you can only be offensive and racist and, uh, and spew uh, heated and hate-filled rhetoric if you are a white male on the right. And this is uh, CNN, Don Lemon, talking on Como Primetime. not to demonize any one group or any one ethnicity, but we keep thinking that the biggest terror threat is something else. Some, some, some people who are marching you know, towards the border like it's imminent, and when the last time they did this, a couple hundred people came and they, you know, most of them did get into the country. Most of them tired, you know, got tuckered out before they even made it to the border. Um, so we have to stop demonizing people and realize the biggest terror threat in this country is white men most of them radicalized right i have to stop it right here as he isn't it funny and kind of ironic how he just said we have to stop demonizing people and then he says the biggest threat to the country is white men hmm. up to the right and we have to start doing something about them there is no travel ban on them there is no ban on you know they have the muslim ban there is no white Basically, how he ends it is that there's no white band band, which, uh, as I pointed out in the middle of the video, is kind of ironic he says that uh, because he says we need to stop demoralizing people. And it's also ironic that he says that because either he's married or in a relationship with a white man. And yet he's calling them the real threat. And I have one question to ask to Don Lemon. What happens if, let's say, uh, your significant other gets attacked because somebody says, well, white men are the problem and I heard it on CNN, so we have to take care of it. I'm putting, I'm taking action in my own hands and I'm going to start hurting white men. And they go out and hurt your significant other. Well, who do you blame then, Don Lemon? Are you going to blame your rhetoric for that attack? Well, what about just CNN and MSNBC as a whole or any left-wing organization in the media? If white men become prey of hate crime, are we going to blame it on this heated rhetoric here? Are we? And if we don't, then there's double standards and there's double speak going on, as George Orwell would say. So it, this doesn't help, especially when we just read that article uh, over the rabbi receiving death threats for allowing the President of the United States to come over and do his job. 
and now CNN comes out with this and states this. This is the same person who had on people on his CNN panel calling Kanye West a token Negro. This is the same man who had a woman, a, a hack, in my opinion, a hack when it comes to journalism. Uh, she writes for GQ and she stated that President Trump has radicalized more individuals than ISIS has. This is the man who had her on his panel and she said that. People on his panel have also referred to Kanye West as a token Negro and now he is saying white men are the biggest threat to this country. <laughs> yep, let's just keep blaming that rhetoric on Donald Trump, the president. Let's just keep blaming it on him. Let's just keep doing that because it isn't a two-way street here at all. No, 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 no. President Trump doesn't have a point when he says the press are the enemy of the people. And, I mean, really, what's going on here is one side claims to be virtuous over the other. And I believe both parties are at fault to a certain extent. But if I had to blame one in specific, and I had to say where most of it comes from, I would say it definitely comes from the Democrats. The reason I say this is, if you just listen to this video, and then you see the way they talk about anybody who is of a different political persuasion than them, the way they refer to them, and the way they refer to Trump supporters and them being ignorant and not really knowing the problem and the racism spewing from President Trump, they don't understand it. They have to help them. They have to help us Trump supporters out. And it, this doesn't help out at all. It, my point being is that the press isn't innocent when it comes to the heated rhetoric, nor is the president. They're both at fault when it comes to heated rhetoric. They both are. But neither will accept blame. And I think if the press was truly in favor of the people, what they would do is be the bigger person in this situation. Say, so, you know what? We have said some things in the past that are inflammatory. And so is President Trump. But let's work together to make sure we can mend our country instead of spewing this divisive rhetoric. But they totally disregard that and keep spewing heated and hate-filled rhetoric and racism. They're the ones who are really, really, really promoting racism. Truly. CNN is right now. <laughs> Uh, really, they are. And it's pretty scary that we can just allow a news organization to do this. I mean, uh, so for instance, what if uh, there, there is no debating that overwhelmingly the people who have committed these mass murders in America have been white men? Nobody's disputing that. Majority, if not all of them, have been white men. Completely agree. But what happens when you bring up the statistic that African Americans uh, kill more people in the United States than any other demographic. What if you bring up the statistic that most terrorist groups are Muslim? What if you bring up that? Then you're racist. But if you blame domestic terrorism exclusively on white men, fair game. Fair game, especially if you're a gay black dude. Fair game. You're higher up in the oppressive um, hierarchy so you can say whatever you want so yeah a bunch of double standards going on here this doesn't help and it's very very sad that he would say something like this right after what just happened at the synagogue truly 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 terrible on his behalf now uh, in other news President Trump has taken shots at Harry Reid uh, because uh, former Senator Harry Reid, he was a Senate Majority Leader uh, back in 1993. He represented Nevada. And the reason he's taking shots at him is because the Democrats are coming out against him, uh, President Trump, for implying that he can eliminate the birthright citizenship with an executive order. Now, uh, the reason he said this is because Senator Henry... Harry Reid has actually come out in favor of this back in 1993. And he has uh, stated 
you know, that we need to do something about this back in 1993. And President Trump actually tweeted out a video today of Henry Reid back in 1993 giving a speech in the Senate regarding the birthright citizenship issue. And uh, I'll go ahead and play it for you. If making it easy to be an illegal alien isn't enough, how about offering a reward for being an illegal immigrant? No, no sane country would do that, right? Guess again. If you break our laws by entering this country without permission to give birth to a child, we reward that child with U.S. citizenship and guarantee a full access to all public and social services this society provides. And that's a lot of services. Is it any wonder that two-thirds of the babies born at taxpayer expense in country county-run hospitals in Los Angeles are born to illegal alien mothers? Yep, that was a former Democrat, but nowadays, if he was to say something like that, guess what would happen to Hen uh, Henry Reid? He would be called a bigot, a uh, homophobe, a xenophobe, racist, far-right, neo-Nazi, fascist. That's what he would be called. But back in 1993, Democrats were saying the same thing President Trump is stating right now. But Henry Reid fired back today and uh, came out with this, and I'm quoting from Politico here. Uh, it states uh, that Trump can tweet whatever he wants while he sits around watching TV, but he is profoundly wrong. After I proposed that awful bill, my wife, La uh, Landra, immediately sat me down and said, Harry, what are you doing? Don't you know that my father is an immigrant? She set me straight. And in my 36 years in Washington, there is no more valuable lesson I learned that the strength and power of our immigrants and no issue I worked harder on than fixing our broken immigration system, said Harry, former Senate Majority Leader and Minority Leader. Immigrants are the lifeblood of our nation. They are our power and our strength. This president wants to destroy, not build, to stoke hatred instead of unify. Wow, he said the same thing in 1993. And do you think I buy for a second that his wife sat down with him saying, Harry, what are you doing? My father is an uh, immigrant. Uh, you can't do this. Do you think she really said that? And do you think she didn't have knowledge of him doing this beforehand? If they have any kind of decent relationship, you don't think that he would share with his wife, hey, I'm coming up with this bill. You don't think that he would at least share a little bit of that information with his wife? Come on now. And she didn't say anything until afterwards. Come on. And you're just now coming out and saying that when people pull it up, uh, you know, uh, what, 25 years later or something? Now you're coming out and saying, I made a mistake. But, you know, whatever, 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 man. You're just doing it so that way you relate, you, you, you remain on the right side of the publicity. That's all he's doing. And it's sickening. It truly is. I mean, I know politicians in general flip-flop so that way they can get votes, they can get money, they can get reelected. But what I see predominantly on the left are politicians who flip-flop. For instance, Barack Obama, before he was elected to the presidency, he was against gay marriage, as was Hillary Clinton, until she started running for the presidency. So, this right here, to me, is... <laughs> it's completely insane. I don't buy it for a second. I really do not. I really do not. I think he's just doing this to remain on the right side of publicity. I think that's all he's doing. That's my opinion, of course. And that's all we have for the news today. I hope you all enjoyed it. And like always, if you have any suggestions on something you would like me to cover, please let me know and I'd be happy to do so. And I hope you all have a wonderful day. Happy Halloween to all and peace.